Hello and welcome to the Hockey News Now. I'm Stephen Ellis. That's Nick Emanuele. Nick, how you doing? I'm doing great. Another great night of hockey. Yeah, I got to say the first round, we always know how fun that is. Last year's official first round was kind of a bust because of how great the qualification round is. But right now, what we're seeing here, this is awesome. This is this is the fun hockey we like to see. But the one thing we don't like to see is dangerous hits in the game. And we're going to start talking about Nazem Kadri, who at this point hasn't been suspended, but he does have a hearing. It could be multiple games against after hitting Justin Falk up high. Now, I believe he doesn't fall into the repeat offender category. It's been over two years since he actually got his last suspension, but this is someone who clearly does have a history of doing this. So what are your thoughts on that hit? And obviously in a few hours, we should know what the deal is, but at this time we don't know what the suspension is, if any. For sure. So I think something that's important to keep in mind with respect to the repeat offender label is that that per the NHL's rules, at least uh, only affects how much of their salary they lose during their suspension. Uh, it does not affect how long they're suspended or if they're suspended. So I certainly would expect uh, Kadri to, to take a couple games off and, and maybe even an extended uh, vacation for him. Not a good hit. Uh, he genuinely seemed like he was surprised at, at the reaction. I don't think he was intending to hit Justin Falk up high, but I mean, the first contract contact was with the head. He, he, he really didn't have any mitigating factors there. Falk's head didn't move just prior to the hit. So uh, yeah, like I said, he's, he's going to be taking a couple games off here. All right. Edmonton versus Winnipeg, because that was the very first game we talked yesterday. How did the Jets stop McDavid? Well, they did. McDavid was nowhere to really be found found there. And that was a, a pretty big deal. And I know people are saying for Winnipeg, oh, this is like an upset victory. If you're looking at the, the best players, yeah, McDavid and Dre Sada are on the Oilers, but the Jets, you know, they, they, they're pretty close in the standings. This is a team that, yeah, they struggled near the end, but we knew that they were better than we kind of saw them near the end of the regular season. So what happened? Well, I mean, I think if you look at, Purely the stats, the Oilers certainly got hella bucked. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's 100% that simple, but it's it's not a ton more complicated. Uh, at 5-on-5, five five, per natural stat trick, uh, it was 58 minutes of 5-on-5, five five, almost the entire game. And Edmonton outchanced Winnipeg, outshot, outattempted, outscoring chance, out high dangerous uh, scoring chance. Winnipeg in, in pretty much all aspects. Um, now I think subjectively, it feels like Edmonton didn't really have any periods of really sustained pressure in Winnipeg's end. It didn't feel like Connor Hellebuck was just, uh, you know, having a, a kind of otherworldly game despite his sparkling statistics. Uh, so I, I do think Winnipeg did a pretty good job of limiting McDavid and Drysaddle's effectiveness. But I mean, I guess now now the, the the trouble is having to do it at least three more times. Yeah, that is a tough one. It's hard to to stop McDavid once, let alone a full playoff series. But at the same time, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks did last year. So there's that. All right, talking about Florida versus Tampa Bay. How do the Panthers bounce back after two early losses? Obviously, having to to trail the defending Stanley Cup champions, even as when you're the higher seed, is a tough thing. It's very tough, but I mean, I think really what they need to do is continue the way they've been playing. Florida, they're, they're not playing bad hockey. They not haven't been blown out. And if you look at the underlying numbers, they would even suggest that Florida's played a little bit better than Tampa has at five on five. Um, I think, you know, it's obviously very difficult when you're down two games to none to anyone, especially now going on the road. It's going to be tough to win this series, but I mean, you can't change the fact that you're down 2-0. So if you're playing well, you're playing well. I, I'm going to be interested to see how they deal with this adversity. I think a moment that stands out to me was right at the beginning of the series when Florida scored that, or looked like they scored that first goal. It was waved off. Then Tampa takes the, face off, the next face off down the ice. Seven seconds later, it's one nothing Tampa Bay. I think Florida really could have started feeling bad for themselves could have, you know, just went into a shell for a few 
few minutes, not even, not even you know, a, a sustained period. But when you do that against Tampa, suddenly you can be down 2 nothing, 3 nothing. And Florida didn't do that. Uh, you know, fortunately, they went on 5-on-3 shortly after. Uh, but, you know, then they scored, they tied it up, they played good hockey after that. So I'm looking for them to continue to do that as, as we move forward in this series uh, and, you know, continue to really take the battle to the cup champs. Doesn't mean they're going to win the series, but I certainly don't expect them to fold here either. It's been a fun year for the Panthers. I would hate for them to fall so easily. Yes. Like like you said, I, I don't think they're just going to back out of this one too easily here. It's all, only two games in the series. We're going to game three. I don't think it's over by any stretch of the imagination. New York Islanders versus Pittsburgh Penguins. Justin Jari has, you know, like the first game, not great. Second game, very good. But he, heading into the playoffs, he was 8-1-0 against the Islanders and is coming off of a great game two performance. Is this someone you can really believe in in the playoffs? Obviously, he's very so-so, and we've seen that with Pittsburgh goalies in the past. Look, Flurry had some weak moments before he got traded, and that's why Matt Murray took over. Then Matt Murray kind of just couldn't do much after winning the Stanley Cup twice, but albeit pretty good years when he did. And then now Tristan Jari is the goalie, and he's hasn't had a great year, was not one of the better starting goalies this year, but he's been just really good against the Islanders. Yeah, I mean, I'm always a little bit skeptical about how much credence to give stats like that. Um, I think they're always very interesting. I think they're always noteworthy. But I think you do have to look a little bit deeper and see, you know, with how with how much they're going to be predictive of, you know, future out so, uh, sorry, uh, future results, um, especially when they don't kind of pass the smell test, as I think you're kind of indicating they might not with Tristan Jari. Um, you know, what I will say in his favor is that when he's good, he, he is very good. And, you know, if he's feeling it against the Islanders, okay, maybe he sustains that confidence. But, uh, you know, he's 8-1 against the Islanders. Okay, he's 5-1 five, five and one this year. Uh, three of the games came in 2018-19. And one of the games this year, he left after 20 minutes. So it's really not a huge sample size. And I think you only have to look to Winnipeg Edmonton to, to see that uh, a goalie stats from the regular season may not necessarily hold up compared to, uh, compared to in the playoffs. And we know the Islanders, they are kind of built for playoff hockey. We saw that last year, and they're hoping for that again this year. Minnesota versus Vegas has been a very tight series, not a lot of goals. Minnesota's defensive system is kind of based on limiting the quality and not necessarily the quantity of their opponent's chances. So they really force teams to play on the perimeter. Uh, no team gave up less high danger chances uh, per 60 minutes at 5-on-5 five five than the Wild. They're back at home now. They're, they don't have Winnipeg, Vegas's crazy crowd going on. Can they grind the Knights down like they did in game one? You know, I think they can. Uh, I was looking at the numbers and Minnesota not giving up high, too many high danger chances. Like you said, the fewest high danger chances in the league. I thought, you know, well, okay, but they play in a division that's really not known primarily for its offense. Uh, but if I, looking under the surface, I mean, they were very consistent in limiting high danger chances against everyone, even against great teams like Colorado and Vegas. Uh, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of variance between the number of high danger chances Minnesota gave up uh, against anyone in their division. Uh, both Colorado and Vegas were limited by far the most by, by Minnesota in, in the season series. Uh, at the same time, though, the word we're using is limit. It's not, it's not eliminate. Uh, and Vegas has a lot of players who they don't need a second invitation to score a goal. So, you can do a lot, you can play good grinding hockey, and you can limit chances, but you're not going to allow zero chances. So <laughs> Vegas could certainly still break through. All right, and to finish things up, Montreal versus Toronto, the final series to begin. It feels like it's a meeting a zillion years in the making. What are you looking forward to here? Because this is one where you don't need to be a Canadians or a Leafs fan to show interest because you know the rivalry is big. And obviously, there hasn't been a ton of outstanding moments between these two teams in the last decade. It's kind of like the, the rivalry kind of quieted down a bit as they both kind of turned their attentions to Boston and even Buffalo in a sense. But what are you looking forward to in this series? I think just the social media takes, you know? <laughs> I think I think that's where the real interest comes from, doesn't it? Because... 
you know, on paper, I don't think this is the most interesting series absent the fans and the history of the teams, because I mean, it really shouldn't be that close just based on, just based on the numbers. Uh, but you know, the fan bases for 30 fan bases in the NHL or 20, well, 30, 31, I guess, if you consider Seattle, uh, it's going to be a very fun series. For one fan base, it's going to be a pretty miserable series. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the takes will be very rational. I'm sure there will be, you know, no, no unkind word ex- words exchanged. I'm looking forward to it. My dad's a Leafs fan. My mom's a Habs fan. I can tell you, this is going to be a lot of fun. To watch. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick.